Howdy gang, in today's episode of Pool School, I am going to fulfill a request. I showed this saltwater tester in my series on salt pools, and people have asked me about it, how to specifically use it. So this episode is specifically how to use this type of saltwater tester, which I think is fantastic. It is made by a company called Oak Lawn. So I'm gonna put that up there so you can see it. Alrighty, and without further ado, Let's get to it. Okay, before we go any further, I want to remind you to like this video if you do and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. And please share this channel with your friends and encourage them to subscribe so they can save some money and learn a few things about taking care of their own pools themselves. Alrighty, so again, this is the Oak Lawn saltwater tester and I really like it. There are a couple things you need to know about it, um, but I'm gonna put a link to where you can get this online. And again, it's not the only place you could do a, a search for it, but again, I'm gonna put that up there so you can read what it is, okay? And I'm gonna leave that up there, but I'm gonna put a link below the description of this video so you can click on it to check out prices on it etc but maybe do a Google search see if you can come up with a better price it is not a cheap item but again today I'm going to show you how it works and a couple things about it alrighty so we'll get to it now okay before we head back to a pool something to clarify on this particular type of tester this brand and this is the one that I've always used um, here's the thing to remember like I've said in other videos most of the time when you measure chemistry of pool water be it whatever it is, total dissolved solids, cyanuric acid, chlorine, etc. You're going, it, you want a reading in parts per million, okay, or PPM. However, this product or this brand and this company, this salt tester measures in parts per thousand, okay, so keep that in mind, or PPT. So, what you, when you, it's a very easy conversion. But just remember, this measures in parts per thousand, and what you want is a measurement of parts per million. It's very simple, okay? If you notice, when I turn this on, it's gonna go through a process, and you'll notice it's 0.00. I'm trying to put it where you can see it without reflection. There you go, okay? So it's 0.00, all right? So if it was 4.00 parts per thousand, in parts per million, it's basically add just move the decimal point over and you end up with 4,000 parts per million, okay? So conversion, move the decimal point over three places. So if it's 3.50 parts per thousand, it's 3,500 parts per million. So keep that in mind when you use a tester like this. Also, these things are normally calibrated right out of the box, so you don't have to really worry about calibrating them and they work right away. However, if you do need to calibrate it, rather than me going to teaching you how to do that, there's instructions that come with this right here in the box, and it tells you exactly how to calibrate it. And it comes with a liquid, uh, a bottle of, of uh, control calibration liquid that is rated at, in mine, it's rated at 4.0. So I can calibrate this, and I usually calibrate it about once a year, all right? So anyway, just remember, this reads in parts per thousand, you have to convert it to parts per million because that's what you want. And the way you do that is just move the decimal point over three places. Okay, that's all. All right, I'm at one of my client's pools. And before I go and use my tester on the pool, I want to come here so we can do a little comparison, all right? So if you look at this, this is an Aquarite, it's a Hayward Aquarite. And it tells about the different levels that are best. So if you look at the salt down here, it says that the ideal level is between 2700 and 3400 parts per million. Remember, we measure in parts per million and the tester tests in parts per thousand. The panel tests in parts per million. So, we're gonna go to the panel and look at the panel. And if you notice, the panel says we're at 2300 parts per million. That's what it's telling me, it's 2300 parts per million. And again, the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm not a big fan of the built-in sensors that come with most of the salt cells because I think they're, I found them to be inaccurate. I've also found them to be unreliable because sometimes they just go kaput and they don't give you an accurate reading. So I like my electronic tester. So now we can go to the pool 
and we can test the system in the water to see if it compares to their measurement of 2300 parts per million. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we know what the system of this salt system is telling us. It measured 2300 parts per million. So I'm going to take you step by step how to use this. First, I'm going to separate the cap from the actual sensor. All right, normally I'd have two hands free. I'm going to rinse the cap. All right, I want to rinse it out. And then I'm going to take a sample of the water a few inches below the surface, okay? Just like so. And there's my water sample. Now, I'm gonna to go to my unit, and you notice on the left it has an on-off button. I'm gonna push that button, turn it on. It's gonna go through a little startup process. Once I see the 0, 0.00 on the readout, now I can start the test. I'm gonna stick the electrode down into the water of the cap. All right, now it's gonna to start to go through a process that takes about a minute to two minutes. It, the, the manual says give it a couple minutes so it stabilizes. And so I'm gonna pause this and I will come back when it's been a couple minutes and I'll show you how to read it. All right, so it has been a couple minutes and I'm ready to check the level. But before I do, there's a little button on the right next to the on off button and it's called hold. I wanna push that before I pull it out of the water test. The reason I want to do that is if I don't, it's going to change numbers. So that holds the reading I have, and I'm going to bring it up. And if you notice what it says, it says 0.50. Okay, remember that measurement is in parts per thousand, and we need parts per million. So to convert, we move the decimal point over three positions. So from the, from the left of the five, we move it to the right one, to the right two, and to the right three, ends up giving us a reading. My salinity, according to this, is 500 parts per million. So remember what it said in the sensor, 2300 parts per million? That's quite a bit off. So I'm gonna trust this as it being only about 500 parts per million, and I'm gonna add some salt. This is not, I'm not gonna put a listing on how, how much salt to add. I'll put a link to a chart that I'll find online for you that can give you an estimate on, based on your pool's gallonage, how much salt you need to add to raise it a certain amount. But right now, again, my level on this is showing that it's 500 parts per million. And that's a little bit too low, right? Especially considering what the system said. Remember, it says I need 2,700 to what, 32? Was it 3,200 or 3,500? But that's what I need. So that's pretty much how I do it now. To shut this down, I just take the hold button off, right? And it resets itself. I push the on off button off. Empty my water. And if you want to clean it off, you can. You can also wipe this down if you want. Put the lid back on it. And I am done testing my pool water. Okay, gang, so that is my video lesson on using the Oakton. I actually had pronounced it wrong because I need reading glasses. It's actually not Oaklawn, which I said earlier. It's Oakton, and it's the Oakton Electronic Saltwater Tester. Now, I did a search online, and I saw a newer version of it. Remember, I said I've had this one for a long time, but I found a newer version of it. It runs anywhere between $100 and $114. So it's a still a good deal. Um, and it slightly varies in the way it works, but it's very similar. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, give you that information. Remember, I'm gonna post a link to that product down in the description of this video. So if you want to order one, you can. If you do have a salt water pool, I really would recommend getting an electronic um, salt water tester because it really is a little bit easier. It's more convenient. It saves you time. You don't have to keep taking a sample down to your pool supply store and then deal with the salespeople there as well. So if you own a salt water pool, it really is something good to have uh, in, your, in your kit. Anyway, I hope that video makes sense. If you have any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below this video. Or if you'd like, you can always email me directly. And again, my email address is gonna come across the bottom of the screen. It's kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Wanna thank you for watching. Wanna also remind you to like this video if you did and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so. And please share this channel with your friends who have their own pools as well. And as always, until we see each other again, please remember to have fun, be safe, Always, always, always watch those kids around water. I'll see you next time.